This video will analyze these solar heaters which are several dozen times cheaper than traditional solar collectors. But first of all I remind you of a well-known idea of uniting solar heaters and greenhouses. For example, we know that this type of solar heaters can be installed inside a greenhouse, and this idea solves many problems of these heaters, including, it increases the lifespan of the mirrors and reduces the cost of its cleaning, and it noticeably reduces the cost of the heater body because the wind is absent inside a greenhouse. Such solar station should be installed near oil fields, and it is needed for the production of steam which is used in the extraction of oil. So, I tried to combine a greenhouse and this solar heater which consists of a wooden frame, a layer of thermal insulation and this sleeve of cheap black film with water, and it is obvious that the sun heats the black film and this heat is transferred to the water. This is the cost of materials for a large solar heater with an area of 15 square meters, and we can see that it is cheaper than $4 per square meter. In addition, I draw your attention to these low greenhouses based on cheap transparent film, and it turned out that adding a transparent film to our solar heater increases the water heating temperature by 10 or 20 degrees Celsius. This is the first variant of the transparent coating of our cheap solar heater. And we can see that cheap greenhouse film covers this black sleeve for the water. And this table describes the cost of materials of our first variant. This is the second variant of our solar heater, and now we will see that the sun heated its water to a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, and I do not recommend heating the water higher than 70 or 80 degrees Celsius, because it causes the appearance of these bubbles which reduce the efficiency of the heater. In addition, the high temperatures decrease the lifespan of the film and deform its surface, and now I show one of my black films which has been heated several dozen times by the sun to a temperature greater than 90 degrees, and we see that the surface of the film is not smooth anymore. This table shows the cost of the materials of our second variant for the case of a large heater with an area of 15 square meters, and it is cheaper than the first variant and the cost of its materials is less than $5 per square meter. This table describes my measurements of the energy parameters of both variants of our solar heater, and we can compare them with the parameters of traditional solar collectors. This is the production of heat by our heater during a hot sunny day in southern Germany for various tasks, and we can see that usually one square meter of a traditional collector produces more heat than our one square meter, but I remind you that our square meter is several dozen times cheaper. This is an example of my calculation of the heat production by our solar heater, and we can see that I used the efficiency of 65% instead of 75% to account for dirt on the films and other real causes which reduce the efficiency. This table shows how much heat is produced by one square meter of our heater for one year, and it shows the cost of our solar heat for the United States, India, and Europe. And it is obvious that our cost depends on this cost of capital and labor, and we see that the higher the heating temperature, the less the annual heat production and the higher the cost of the solar heat. This cost of our heat is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas, these are the cases when our heat is several times cheaper than gas, and these cases correspond to very cheap solar heat which is about 10 times cheaper than gas. I remind you that the cost of solar heat is important for hot water supply of buildings, or for industrial processes of a factory, or for large solar stations which produce heat for district heating of towns and cities. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat but it is obvious that it will be true if our spending money and time reaches these targets. However, the production of heat with a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius requires a more expensive black film, and it requires more maintenance due to those bubbles and due to a decrease in the lifespan of the films, and I took into account these factors for such calculation of the cost of our heat at a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. This is my reminder of the puddles with dirt after the rain for the case of our solar heater without the transparent film. This is also a situation after the rain, and this is my test for two different versions of fixing the edges of the transparent film, and we see that this version does not suit us due to this puddle. 
but this version of fixing the film gives it the right slopes so that the rainwater together with the dirt leaves the surface of the film. Unfortunately, the rain does not wash away all the dirt from the surface of the film, and therefore washing the film every few months may be desirable if we use the film with a long life. In addition, sometimes we need to remove these air bubbles, and we see that this operation is very easy, and later I will show how we can quickly raise the transparent film to remove the bubbles. And I want to add that the problem of the bubbles will be less if the heating temperature is low, and if we use industrial water which was made through deoration. This is my reminder that replacing the black film is a very easy operation. And this is the staples which fix the edges of the black sleeve, and we can see the transparent scotch. But the edges of the sleeves are free of the scotch, and it is necessary for the air outlet after the operation of removing those bubbles. Now I show how my black film is dying, and we can see that its upper half is covered by small holes with a white circle of salt due to drying of the water, and it is interesting that the water goes through the holes only if I press on the film or knock on it. That is why this old film can still be used for our first variant, but now I show that our second variant cannot operate normally with that old film, although now we see that the same film operated normally two weeks ago. So this film was operated for almost 10 months in my Ukrainian climate, and I think that the main cause of its death is the high temperature of the heated water, and not the solar radiation and I think that its lifespan will be longer if the temperature of the heated water will be less than 40 or 680 degrees Celsius. This is the cheapest black film at a cost of 15 cents per square meter, and this is recycled low-density polyethylene, and its thickness is about 100 microns, and I recommend using a more expensive film with a lifespan of several years. Our transparent film can also be long-lasting. And we know that some brands of films for greenhouses can be operated for several years. So, the design of our second variant completely corresponds to this cheap heater, and its construction was described by my video four months ago, but we must add these things to support our transparent film. And I draw your attention to this round of the wire. Now I show the fixation of the edges of the wire, and I am doing it with this little screw. This is the fixation of one of the long sides of our transparent film, and I do it with the staples on wooden battens of the frame of our solar heater, but I recommend fixing the second long side of the film in a different way, and we must add these wooden battens which are the place for the installation of the staples. These screws fix our additional battens on the beams of the heater, and this action allows us to quickly remove our transparent film, and then we can unscrew the edges of the wire. And now our solar heater is ready for the operation of removing those bubbles. And we can see that the short sides of the film are also fixed on additional battens, and now I show this additional batten and staples which fix the edge of the film. We must draw our attention to these gaps of the film near the corners of the solar heater. And it is obvious that these gaps should be minimal, but sufficient for removing such condensate which reduces the efficiency of the solar heater. Our first variant also has additional wooden battens and staples which fix the edges of the transparent film, and screws of the battens allows us to quickly raise the film for the operation of removing those bubbles. This is the situation after the rain, and we see that rainwater leaves the film and does not create a puddle. Unfortunately, I tested our first variant only for several weeks, and perhaps the aging of the film will stretch it, and perhaps rainwater puddles can appear on the old film. That is why I recommend increasing the height of this wooden wall. Other features of both our variants are the same as for this solar heater, and I describe these features in my other videos including my descriptions of schemes of connections to pumps, 
structures of water outlets and advantages of our solar heaters for the cases of their installation on horizontal roofs of buildings.